Uh, my name is Leslie Robertson. I'm going to help chair this session. Um, I'm a part of the board of the TSA, um, and we are so thankful that we can host virtually this year um, because we weren't in Boston. So this session is uh, individual papers focused on Japanese traditional crafts. Um, let me go ahead and just do a brief um, introduction to the first speaker in the paper. Again, um, we have abstracts and bios that are in uh, the program PDF. Um, and then each of the presenters, each of the panelists, if you would like, once you, um, I turn it over to you, uh, you can do a very brief introduction um, to your work and then start with your paper. So we're gonna move to uh, Yuko Matsumoto. Um, yes. And her talk is Ways of Life and Works of Weaving and Dying in o Okinawa Toward a Possible Solution of Carry-On Concern. Uh, my name is Yuka Matsumoto, and I present now uh, from Japan. And my tema is the Ways of Life and Practices of Weaving and Dying in Okinawa Toward a uh, Possible Solution of Carry-On Concern. An introduction. Weaving and dyeing have been practiced in various parts in Okinawa. They have their own characteristics and thus are often considered as precious cultural resources for each locality. Some of them have been even valued as cultural heritage because of relatively long history. More importantly, based on my field experience in Okinawa, all of them, whether historically long or short, have survived or continued with the commitment and efforts of people who wish them to be alive and sustainable. Such efforts are based on their learning from predecessors or by themselves about skills, knowledge, senses, belief, ideas, and meanings of different phases of clothes making. However, it is true that people who are locally engaged in weaving and dyeing have a concern about the sustainable continuity of their activities. In fact, the survey uh, which I conducted in 2013 to 2014 in Okinawa shows that people locally engaged in weaving and dyeing tend to decrease in number and are aging. Interestingly, the concern is not always a depressing factor, but one of the sources for them to think about and find out the meaning of continuing to involve in local weaving and dyeing. This way of coping with the concern turns to be a lesson for prospective followers of local weavers and dyers. Through immediate family or media, they come to know about persons involved in local clothes making and get interested in the activities. Such interest lets the prospective followers find spontaneously a meaning of work on weaving and dying a certain time in their life course. The prospective followers are not literal successor of traditional work, but active agents who wish to realize their interest, in other words, strategists in varied and resilient life course. If it is so, I think it's important at this moment to address an issue of how educators play a role to ease the concern of continuing the local weaving and dyeing activities. I came to this thinking from the fact that in these years, teachers seldom teach about local weaving and dyeing at school in Okinawa. The fact was found from the 2013 to 2014 questionnaire survey on how textile education was taught at 300 elementary junior high and high schools across Okinawa. Then I believed that school teachers need appropriate teaching material and students need a textbook on local weaving and dyeing. Such informative material, if it be made, could be a potential source for people of any age to get interested in local weaving and dyeing in Okinawa and to even become prospective growers. In order to contribute to alleviating the concern about continuity of local weaving and dyeing, such material should deal with how weavers and dyers feel enthusiasm and meanings of their activities and practices in each locality. That is to describe how local people connect to their way of life with weaving and dyeing. 
This study is a, a part of an attempt to materialize such descriptions, and at the same time, it is to make a practical contribution for one of the principles education guidelines issued by Okinawa Prefectural Government to raise persons who succeed Okinawan specific history, tradition, and culture, and who have a pride of Okinawa working together with families and local residents. Specifically, this study takes two steps. First, to find meanings that local people attach to their living and dying activities, and to analyze how such meanings connect to their life way and how the connection would be useful for sustainable way of life in general. Secondly, to write up a textbook that would be a handy for school teachers to use in their classes and for prospective followers to be inspired into various meanings attachable to local textile making, weaving, and dyeing practices. The book, uh, Weaving uh, and Dying in Okinawa and uh, People, uh, People's Lives in Connection with Family and Local Culture, Economy and Tourism uh, from Riku Ushiko uh, this, this This book I published. So uh, the book was eventually published in March 2020. <coughs> Methods. This study delineates connections of practicing weaving and dyeing with a way of life at 18 localities in Okinawa. This is a, uh, uh, those are the places. And uh, this is a map of uh, weaving and dyeing in Okinawa. <coughs> After the collection of these localities by using observation and interviewing, the analysis was made with the focus of the following three points. First, meanings people attached to living and dying practices in the context of local community life. Second, people searching and exploring for local culture. And the third, people seeking for local economic advantage. <coughs> and the results. In this section, the meanings which local handicraft people attach to weaving and dyeing practices are described in three groups. The groups are set according to the association with three aspects of people's local rights. A. Connection among people. B. Expression of local culture. And C. Local economic sustenance. Then we proceed to try to understand more about the relationship of weaving and dyeing practices with local people's individual life history, their family, society, and surrounding nature. <coughs> Meaning of connecting local and remote people. In Izumi, of Motobu town, manufacturing indigo dye stuff and growing indigo plants are kept by only a few families. Among them, especially one family has uh, maintained to produce uh, dye stuff enough to supply to dyers all over Japan. As the local people began to recognize this family's continuing production as a locality's uh, cultural asset, the family operation has gotten support from town people. In uh, the locality of Miyako Island, it is important to raise locally rami plants as textile material. But keeping the material is not enough to continue to make the textile without keeping spinners to make thread by tying rami fibers. So um, classes of spinning thread are uh, started by the cooperative organization to raise a number of potential spinners. The class is held after super time for women to attend being free from household chores and it is held in various sections of the town so that women come to the class by walk. Such arrangement of setting the class came from an idea of the old local customary spinning house with the hope that the classes become a place for knowing and communicating each other among the people of each town section. People in Kumejima Island weep and die in daily lives and at the time of mud dyeing, as the most important process of making Kumejima Tsumugi, the system of mutual help is called Yurimaru and kept well in local ordinary lives. 
in Yonaguni Island, migrants to the island from other prefectures became attracted to the local weaving and dye. They learned to do such clothes making from island native handicraft makers. Then they work hand in hand with island native people to make the locally developed textiles. Eventually, they are now creating textiles while keeping traditional methods of weaving and dyeing. In Kohama Island, we see more cases that expected in which retired women came back to work on weaving and dye, uh, indigo dyeing. It has been customary practice to grandmothers and great grandmothers make kimono with clothes they weave and dye for their family members, such as adult children and their spouses, as well as great children. This kind of kimono is used for traditional ceremonies and festivities, uh, festivals practiced uh, through many generations. Some of the uh, ceremonial festivities are still secretly held only by native islanders. For the elderly women, weaving and dyeing are great fun and a hope and goal of their lives. In cases of uh, Kumejima Island and Yunaguni Island, the work of weaving and dyeing is a suitable job for women who have to manage household affairs, child care, and part-time jobs so that women are able to play a role of the center revolving family members, relatives, and neighbors. From above mentioned cases, weavers and dyers find consciously or unconsciously meanings of their doing that are closely associated with their daily lives, family cycles, and neighborhood relations. They are agents to manage the practice of clothes making in their individual and family life courses and local social life. They actually manage work and life balance and play a role of connecting immediate and remote people in family and society. Meaning of expressing local culture. Among those who are engaged in local clothes production, self proclaimed uh, artists are very found in Okinawa, uh, while they are, uh, there are uh, theory artists who live and die for the sake of their own express work. Other than seeing the textile outside to express the individual creative mind, seeing it as a, a source of various senses, traditionality or historicity is often shared by those who practice local living and dying. In other words, they see in the process and product of, of, uh, of their doing a meaning of involving in and revitalizing their local culture. By having such meaning, they feel spiritual richness. For instance, people who make a shofu interpret the meaning of this textile as a shizenfu, clothes of nature, that is, clothes born from local plants, water, land, wind, sunshine, or elements of nature that has existed over time in the locality, going closely with overall regional culture and history of Okinawa. Nature in this wording means not merely physical environment, but human touch. People who make Shigana Hanaori, Tarababe Nitsumugi, and Urasue Ori study how uh, predecessors made these textiles in the past Especially, they like to know how predecessors try to express their senses and feelings while making textiles in the same environmental setting. People involved now in making the textiles value an idea that the textiles they are making are an expression of locally embedded culture. People who are engaged in manufacturing Iha Mensa and Yuntanza Hanami respectively find a source of pride when they study that the root of these textiles could be traced to Southeast Asia. So they express certain kind of Southeast Asian features on clothes they make. Likewise, in the case of Lingata and Shuriori, people are consciously aware of them originated from the court culture of Ryukyu Kingdom, and they try to keep expressing spiritual wealth on the textiles. Apart from the uh, locally deep-rooted cases, 
some cases in which there was no locally based living and dying practices. Local administrative offices, such as Tomifusuku City and Rasway City, initiated to set up an organization of living and dying, hoping to create a new culture to, uh, to revitalize local community. From the above mentioned cases, ways of practicing living and dying vary across Okinawa region in terms of history, locality, and environmental setting. However, people who involved in doing so are a positive agent to study and explore their uh, own local culture. They value what they learn and discover in process and product of their moving and dying, and they are not hesitant to try to express it in their various ways on the process and product of living and dying. <laughs> Meaning of local economic sustenance. Manufacturing textiles have been playing a role not only to keep local culture, but also to enrich local economic life. In Okinawa, in some localities, people developed production system and uh, mechanics to meet the demand of larger amount of uh, textiles. The time uh, when such development was started depends on cases, but such developments were obviously first taken place after major period, responding to the nationwide modernization, and secondary after uh, World War II. Because of larger amount of products, in each below mentioned case, people have to manage cooperative operations and to sustain recruiting and training system while keeping local culture, cultural traits. In the case of Ryukyu Katsuri and of Yayama Joku, people make reports on how to make distinctive motifs by rethinking and modifying traditional techniques of weaving and dyeing. From the cases of manufacturing Yayama Joku and making textile goods out of Yayama Minsa, it is impressive to see people continue to make reports to improve their technique and to update designs by making personal development. Recent economic orientation uh, becomes linked to tourism. Manufacturing locally based textiles in Okinawa is no uh, exception from this trend. In fact, textiles are made as merchandise products being related to promoting local economy and tourism, even so, while seeking economic feasibility, people engaged in living and dying in each locality do not forget to think and rethink about the meaning of handmade to create new design to continue reno renovating techniques. They also seem to enjoy participating in making local based uh, traditional textiles every day. <laughs> Apart from Okinawa, but in its neighborhood islands, Amami Oshima Island, people have been manufacturing Oshima Tsumugi, silk pickup weaving. Its production became on, on large scale in the uh, Meiji period, but now many workshops are closed due to rapid decrease in kimono consumption all over Japan. In this situation, some shop owners who want to survive start to study how workshops in Okinawa survive. Once local based textile production is linked to larger economic market and also tourism, people tend to concentrate on economic feasibility of textile. However, once economy and tourism are down, some people redefine the meaning of economic feasibility attached to textiles and shift it to meaning for life, and that is the process of and the product of living and dying is a source of fun in work and hope of lives. This shift implies that close meeting could be linked to local economic sustenance. Conclusion. I conclude this paper by pointing the following three understandings to alleviate the concern of current condition in which local based textile makings stand and to achieve a goal to make the local based textile uh, makings sustainable. First, we understand how uh, local based textiles help the people in Okinawa. Living and dying can become fun and a hope of life that is ikigai for uh, those who 
English and Pakistan media. We can leave local people to be independent by making uh, them connect with their family, local community, and even larger society. Secondly, to understand the uh, variety of meanings attached to living and dying. They are not special for the elderly rights in more or less isolated islands, but for multi generations, retirees, middle ages, young people who may become uh, prospective weavers and dyers in a certain stage uh, of their life courses. Thirdly, uh, to understand that local based textile making can be connected to sustainable rights in each locality. Local based textile makings can be connected with people's lives through expressing local, uh, old, and new culture, senses of relating with their families, societies, and natural environment. Acknowledgements. This study is supported by JSPS Kakenhi, RAM number JP15K04505, from 2015 to 2018. I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Toshiyuki Sano for his critical comments and suggestions to early versions of this paper. Thank you. Um, so I want to go ahead um, and welcome our final presenter, uh, Miwa Kanatani, and she's going to be uh, presenting on the transmission of traditional textile making skills by amateur weavers, the case of the Wisteria Fiber Textile Makers of Kyoto. So thank you so much for joining us and I will turn it over to you. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Miwa Kanetani from Japan. It is morning in here, Osaka. The, the title of my presentation is The Transmission of Traditional Textile Making Skills by Amateur Weavers, the case of the Wisteria Fiber Textile Makers of Kyoto. The preservation of traditional and indigenous textile making skill is now recognized as an important aspect of cultural heritage management. Efforts to preserve these traditions have often involved commercializing them, either by adapting traditional textiles to meet modern consumer preferences or by drawing on their values as part of the tourist experience. Whether these traditions are passed on seems increasingly to depend on their values in the global marketplace. For example, in India, where I have conducted research for many years, traditional textile making skills have been revitalized by demand from national and international markets. The revival of the local textile industry made it possible for rural artisans to continue pursuing their traditional occupations without necessarily shifting their residence or jobs. In Japan's Okinawa Islands, the bash of textile weaving, which uh, Yuka already uh, discussed, tradition had almost disappeared during the Second World War, but was revived by women as a way to pursue a livelihood. The success of the bash of tradition is because the product are targeted at the kimono market on the mainland. I do not intend to criticize the phenomenon, rather I wish to focus on alternative, non-commercial ways of preserving this tradition. The question that interests me is whether it is possible for traditional and indigenous textile making skills to be transmitted from one generation to the next for motivations other than economic gain. Here are some ex examples of how skills are being passed on without being converted into something of economic value. I want to clarify the significance of cultural activities by amateurs in the transmission of textile knowledge and skills. The keyword is uh, keyword in this discussion is amateur. An amateur is a person who engages in arts, studies, sports, etc., as a hobby or extra skill, not as a profession. It is also someone who engages in these activities on 
an unpaid basis. Describing handwork as amateurish, amateurish has traditionally been understood in a negative light. Feminist art history has revealed that women's art and crafts have long been undervalued because of gender bias regarding the being amateur work done in the home. However, with the rise of the do-it-yourself culture and the sale of handmade goods on the internet, the boundary between professionals and amateur has become broad in recent years. Also, a community of amateur makers is fostering a culture of making things. For example, amateur knitting and stitching activities were carried out to support those who had suffered in the areas affected by the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami in Japan. Doing crafts together helped to restore the community of survivors. Traditional sock knitting in Turkey is another example of amateur participation in the restoration of traditional textile skills like those discussed in this presentation. I refer to recent research on the significance of amateur textile production and in my presentation, I will discuss the case of Fujiori conservation activities in which there were no professional participation uh, practitioners left to carry on the weaving activities. Instead, amateurs who were outsiders to the local community took take place. Fujiori is a bust fiber cloth woven with yarn made of fibers taken from the back of the wisteria vine. Fuji means wisteria and ori means weaving. Prior to the 18th century and the development of cotton cultivation, bast fibers which are taken out of the inner bark of the trees or other vegetation were widely used for clothing in Japan. Fujiori is an example of a textile made from bast fiber. It was formerly produced all over Japan, but now only a particular village in the Tango area of the mountains of North West Kyoto carries on the tradition. Yamagi, work crossing for mountain uh, work. In the Tango region of Kyoto, Fujiori was used as work crossing and called Yamagi, literally mountain crossing. Fujiori served different purposes because it's both very strong and fire and water resistant. This picture shows charcoal burning operation. In Tango, people wore Fujiori Yamagi over these clothes during such hard work. There's no real Yamagi left. This photo is a modern reproduction. It looks like a kimono, but the clothes is different, coarse and stiff. Fujiori was also used to make the sumabukuro, porches worn by women divers who harvested seafood. The photo on the right is of an ama woman diver in the Tango region of Kyoto. You can see that she has a Fujiori cross tailored porch around her waist. Fujiori cross were used for shikinuno pressing soy sauce, squeezing tofu, lining streamers, and as edging for tatami mats. In 1920, Fujiori was already an important source of cash income alongside agriculture. However, lifestyle went through rapid change because of modernization, which led to a decrease in demand for Fujiori. Consequently, Fujiori production declined after the 1930s. In the 1960s, an agricultural cooperation's effort led to commercialization. Production continued until 1981, but a sudden fall in price caused most weavers to leave Fujiori production. 
However, after the local community in which Fujiori had been passed down became depopulated, volunteers from outside became involved in its conservation. Thus, Tango Fujiori was listed as an <clears throat> intangible folk cultural heritage by both the government of Japan and that of Kyoto Prefecture. The Association for the Preservation of Tango Fujiori, hereafter referred to as the Fujiori Association, was founded in 1989 and designated as a body responsible for pres preserving this heritage. I have been active in the Fujiori Association since 2012, while also carrying out participant observation as a cultural anthropologist. Kamisia village is where Fujiori was transmitted. Uh, the last bearers of Tango's Fujiori, technical knowledge were living in Kamisea. The reason for the survival of this craft tradition in Kamisea is said to be the limited means of earning an income there due to its geographical and meteorological features. Tango is a village in a mountainous area in northern part of Kyoto in an area with steep hilly topography and little flat land for cultivation. In winter, snow accumulates to depths of between two and four meters in the part. In the past, people engaged in charcoal making, paper making, and fujiori making as well as slush and burn farming. Now there are only 24 people among 15 households in Kamisea village. Also, the headquarters of the association is located in Kamisea. Most of the members come from outside. The Fujiori Association has succeeded in carrying on the knowledge and skills of Fujiori, which almost ceased to exist at the end of the 1980s on the present day, over this period, it has generated no commercial income through selling goods or tourist services to sustain its activities. The members have been making Fujiori and presenting their work at public exhibitions every few years. Members who hoped to sell their work are allowed to attach price to them sales, however, are regarded as individual activities. In this respect, the Fujiori Association is devoted to the cultural aspect of the craft. This raises the following questions. Why didn't the Fujiori Association take the commercialization approach? How did it sustain its activities for more than 30 years without taking such an approach? Okay. Next, I would like to discuss why the Fujiori Association emphasizes culture rather than economic activities. For one thing, the association's activity began as a museum program. If the concept comes uh, conservation efforts had been started by local agricultural cooperatives or the Chamber of Commerce, they would have been more proactive in commercializing the product. As I already mentioned, Fujiori making in Tango had been on the verge of disappearing. What changed this situation was folkways study commissioned by the Kyoto Prefectural Government. Starting in 1980, a folkloristic conducted a survey of Fujiori in Kamisea village, where only a few women were weaving. The results of that study were made public in the exhibition. In 1983, the exhibition caught the attention of fascinated textile fans. People who saw the catalog were altered to the survivor of Fujiori a type of textile thought to be extinct. Fujiori in Kamisea also attracted who hoped to learn more about ancient weaving techniques. 
to respond to those who wished to learn more, a regular training course with women practitioners of the tradition as instructors was first offered in 1985. Students who had taken these training courses initiated the Fujiori Association in 1989. The introduction of training courses finally made the transmission of the Fujiori technique possible. Recruiting hairs from outside the area has resulted in a more diverse group of practitioners, ensuring the continuity of the group's activities and preventing the line of inheritors from dying out. Second, most of, of the time, the members of the association devoted to Fujiori is spent in the preparation on organization of the training course. The courses offered by the Fujiori Association embody its principal aim of preserving and spreading of the Fujiori craft that survives in Kamiseya. The classes making up the course are given in Kamiseya. The primary material used to make Fujiori is wisteria vines collected in joint use forest treated as common resources. Only those who complete the course may become become members of the Fujiori Association and be asked to return as active inheritors of the tradition to assist with the course the following years. Over the past 30 years, the courses have attracted 604 students. As of 2019, the Fujiori Association had 120 members. The few photos that follow show the training courses held by the association. It also shows how much time the members spend on the training sessions. The course starts every year in May. Students who attend it make a foray into the mountains to gather wisteria vines. To find the sites where wisteria is growing, they must climb up a steep slope. This allows them to understand what kind of physical structures wisteria climbs on and the environments in which it thrives. Thus, an bring in them to judge from which materials it is suitable to take fiber. After hitting the wisteria bag with the wood mallet, the outer section of the bag is peeled off to obtain the inner part of the outer section. The inner skin is boiled with wood ash in a large bowl for four hours. After the boiled inner skin is washed in a stream, each strip is scraped with a bamboo tool. This process removes non-fibrous and extraneous materials. The fibers are pry joined into one continuous length of yarn without ties. This important process requires a good deal of patience. Finally, the students in the course weave a Fujiori cloth together. Two-day courses have been offered seven times a year to complete the entire process of Fujiori. The third reason is that the difficulty of commercialization became apparent early on. Tango is in fact a major producer of tango chirimen, Japanese kimono silk crepe, producing 70 to 80 percent of the silk used in today's Japanese kimonos and obi sashes. Local professional silk weavers attended the first three or so Fujiori training courses because the demand for kimonos was declining and they wanted to make use of the new materials in their product development. However, the silk weavers' hopes for Fujiori soon turned to disappointment. It became apparent that the process of making Fujiori 
was too labor intensive and that the price of the product was not worth the cost. Wild wisteria cannot be gathered by machine and it takes an enormous amount of manual labor to do so. One of the local silk weavers who finished the course commercialized an obi sashes using wisteria thread as part of the silk weaving process. His ingenuity in producing wisteria products at a lower cost was success and this obi became a popular product. However, the members of the association did not follow his example and make products at the lower cost by using less wisteria yarn. Many of the members from Tango were involved in the silk weaving industry and understood the costing of the textiles. Nonetheless, many members of the association were reluctant to call his sachet obi a fujiori. The fujiori weaving made by the last women of the kamisea tradition uses wisteria yarn in both the warp and weft. Therefore, it is commonly understood that the authentic fujiori that has been passed down is made entirely of wisteria yarn. However, if a member creates a piece and submits it to an exhibition, they may use yarn other than wisteria in need, but it must be no more than 50% of the total amount. Such a precedent led members to believe the commercialization would detract from the essence of Fujiori. This is the reason the association has not actively promoted commercialization. I have shown that Fujiori is an ancient and rare Japanese textile and that the Fujiori Association in Tango, Kyoto is the only one in Japan that has passed down the knowledge and skills of wisteria weaving. Then I discussed why the Fujiori Association did not actively commercialize the product and emphasize culture rather than economic activities. For one thing, this activity began as a museum program. Second, most of the time the members of the association devoted to Fujiori is spent in the preparation and organization of the training course. Third, the members of the association are afraid of losing the authenticity of Wisteria by commercializing it. Returning to the first question, I would like to discuss the importance of amateurs for the inheritance of traditional textile skills. The members' primary motivation for partic participation in the Fujiori Association is not economic. They don't depend on Fujiori for their livelihoods. Every member has other ways to make a living and then devotes their free time to Fujiori. On the contrary, members make use of, other, uh, of their own time and money to support the Fujiori Association's preservation activities. Their responsibility for carrying on this intangible cultural heritage requires that they spend their time, effort, and money on it. Membership is far more demanding than a mere hobby would be. It is obvious that members find enjoyment in participating because they are volunteers. They need a strong personal motivation to participate. They are proud to be involved in passing on their intangible cultural heritage. Not only that, some are genuinely immersed in Fujiori. Some are looking forward to meeting the members while others go to Kamisea to enjoy a life away from their late daily lives. Because they are amateurs, they are able to spend their time and money for weaving authentic Fujiori, which is made entirely with stereo yarn with, without counting the cost. I argue that Fujiori, which is difficult to commercialize, has remained modern 
30 years after declining in 1980s because of the involvement of amateurs. My presentation explored the implications of the success of Tango Fujiori for the transmission of traditional and indigenous textile making skills in the context of non-profit cultural activities operated by amateur. I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. So this is um, a wonderful time. Let me ask all the panelists to turn their videos and microphones back on, please. Thank you, this is absolutely wonderful. Um, I wanna jump in and start answering the questions um, as we're getting on the question and answer panel. Um, and I'm gonna keep encouraging people to, um, to send those in. Mewa, since we just ended with your presentation, um, we had a few questions. Um, we had someone ask if you could briefly explain apply joining. Apply joining. Um, apply joining is not spinning. It is uh, uh, without to tying, uh, joining the the fiber. Uh, it means like uh, what to say. Mm. Are they knotting it together? You know, not not knotting together. It's the, the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the joining that you you like that like this. Can you? Yes. Perfect. Uh, can you see me? Yeah, like this. This is uh, twining this part, twining this part, and again twining this part. Yeah. Okay. Joining so <laughs> without tying. Separate and then together. Putting together, um, twining. Uh, and this tiny and after. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'd better show you the video. That, I think that works perfectly. I'll have to okay. have the panelists uh, okay. respond. But again, one together, this together, and, and together, then and together. Two. Perfect. Um, wonderful. And then um, I think that answered that question. And then a uh, question with um, can the Fujiori, the wisteria plants, be cultivated in gardens. Can they be yes. grown? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, it's cultivated, but uh, um, when uh, for gardening in Japan, Japanese labs of uh, gardening Fuji, Fuji uh, wisteria, um, but that type of uh, vines are not suitable for weaving. Mm -hmm. We need a very straight vines. So uh, I know one of the uh, weaver tried to cultivate in the, in mm -hmm. the garden for uh, taking wisteria vines for weaving, but uh, I don't think it's uh, success. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, going to harvest in the mountain region is where it grows the best. Is that mm, right? Yes. Yes, right. Okay. You're right. Um, let me see, are there, the, the individuals that are taking, um, have taken the training course, do they continue to make Fuji Ori? Do they make it in their own time? And has any, I'm curious, has anyone else commercialized it other than the one with the OB belt? Mm -hmm. um, not actually, uh, yes. Um, the members who completed the uh, course uh, tried to uh, are continuously making their works, Fujiori works, and some are trying commercializing, but it, it's still on the way. It's mm -hmm. trial. I, I know one uh, young uh, woman, uh, she recently shifted to Kamisea to, uh, to be a professional Fujiori Weaver. So I'm looking forward to her project in future. <laughs> Good. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and best of luck to her as well mm -hmm. to continue Thank the you. tradition. Yeah. Um, another ask if there are there any other artists that are using wisteria fiber in their work mm -hmm. that you know? Yes, I know. Also, the members of the Fujiori Association. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know the specific names of that? Uh, do, do you do you want a specific artist name? Or she might want specific. You may type them in the chat box. Um, 
<laughs> or if there's a link to the Fuji Ori Association. Um, yes. Or maybe uh, okay. Maybe that in the chat. That way they can have access to that uh, moving forward. Okay, I will text the uh, Fuji Ori Association website to the chat. Um, and and another, we people are very interested in the wisteria. I think it's very new, so I'm going to ask, uh, mm -hmm. keep it on here just for a second. Um, are the members uh, different ages? Um, are they older, younger, or do you see a lot of different members? Ages. Yes. Okay. Ages. Uh, ages. Uh, uh, there's a variety of ages and gender also. Um, the young, youngest one is the 20s, 30s, up to 80s, 90s. Wow, that's very mm -hmm. good. Very good. Um, Okay, let me go ahead and I'm gonna jump back around to the other panelists. Um, oh, so, so we had several people asking about your book and yeah. if it was uh, for Yuka, if your book is published in English and Japanese? Oh, uh, no, no, uh, only Japanese. Only Japanese. Yes, okay. only Japanese. Yes, I and hope so, uh, translate, but uh, not yet. <laughs> okay, um, and is it available in the United States? Um, maybe uh, if you order uh, to Japan, uh, Okinawan company, published company, uh, Ryukyu Symposia. But uh, if you uh, if, uh, want to order, uh, please contact to my email address. I will introduce how to uh, buy. Yes. Okay, good. And as a reminder, you all are should be able to message anyone that's an attendee. So just look yes. for Yuka. Um, on the attendee list and you can ask her about her book. It, it came through, I'm trying to sort through all the questions with that. Um, okay, Yuka, is, uh, a couple other questions is, uh, what is the significance of the yellow kimono in the procession? Someone asked that question. The yellow kimono that was in the procession and if there's significance. Oh, uh, good, this, this one, maybe. Um, maybe it was that one. Yes, maybe it was uh, that one. I see, I see. Oh, oh uh, mm -hmm. uh, this, this is a <coughs> uh, milk. Uh, it, it's a, a kind of god. So. Oh, okay. That's yes, uh, yes, he is a, a kind of god of uh, Kohama Island, and whose name is uh, milk. Yes, so it, it uh, died from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at, at the bark, bark of a tree. Uh, yes, it died from uh, bark the bark of, of the tree. Yes. So it natural died yellow. Yeah, yes, yellow. Yeah. Okay. Wonder. That's a brilliant, beautiful color. Um, <laughs> you got now that you have your. Can you go? Someone asked to see your reference page on your presentation. Can you go to the end and okay. let us? And who, um, Loretta, maybe you can take a screenshot of it once she pulls that up. Okay, so if you want to, anyone wants to take a snap of that, that'd be perfect. Um, also, let's see, uh, Yuka, with your book um, from Kathy, she asked if uh, how we can, uh, how teachers could use the textbook in schools. And if there's access to um, all of the supplies needed to for the lessons, have you thought about that being used in schools and how that can happen? Oh, I, I used uh, this textbook in my classes of mm -hmm. lecture, so um, uh, many uh, students uh, impressed to the contents of the book. So, yeah. Good. It just seems like there's a lot of interest, um, of course, in the attendees. So hopefully you can have an English version moving oh, forward. I, I hope. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. uh, wonderful. Yeah, OK, let me go up one more. Um, so this is from Laura Wong. She says, in Japan today, it seems that kimono are increasingly only being worn for special occasions instead of as daily wear. As a result, fewer people are learning how to wear kimono and it is also cost prohibitive and less convenient than Western clothing for many. With the shrinking market for kimono, how can we support artisans who continue to practice using 
and other traditional textile arts. Even if we are not wealthy enough to spend so much money on the kimonos. So Keiko, maybe you can answer that because you had one for $12,000 uh, that you did show. And you're on mute right now. Okay, um, I think it is very difficult to support. And the, the re reason why Yuzen Dying has um, being survived into the 21st century is because there are, um, the method is used for formal wear. But a lot of um, methods for used for casual wear are almost all gone. So I'm sure it is very difficult for artisans to continue to produce. And especially, even though the, the people wear the kimono as formal wear, um, the people's preference had been changing like um, they we always wear western clothing so the color preference or the the print um, motif designs preference are all skewed to the western clothing so the the motif textile design has been much changed and colors have been much changed from the the, the older textile designs and it we can say it is a textile design trend, but it's far from the, the original kimono textiles because a lot of people in the early 19, uh, 20th century preferred bigger and colorful textile designs, but now very subtle um, pale tone colors. So, um, and the reason, the, the, and the reason for the, the high price is mostly because of the labor cost. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to support them, but, um, and oh, one more thing, um, the textile people, the business people try to produce prints in cheaper ways. So use and textile, hand painted use and textile is the most labor intensive, but they produce um, in the, developed pattern using, screen using, and now the digital print, it is called using too. So that's the business. So um, in the future, I'm pretty sure that people wear digital print using and digital print kasri and digital print bingata, something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, before the, the old artisans gone, I think we should preserve something. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, merchandise produced in the late 19th century and 20th centuries, um, people think that they are just a merchandise and ignore. And a lot of um, European or the Western people who love those textile designs recently buy them as secondhand clothing. And it's much cheaper. And the people who bought very expensive textile in the 1970s and 80s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, they have to release them in very cheaper prices to the secondhand clothing dealers. So mm -hmm. the market is very active right now. So mm -hmm. someone who is relatively rich, not too rich because the secondhand clothing is sold much cheaper prices. So among them, a piece or two could be the one that artisans put special efforts on create, um, um, using their creativity. So I'm just hoping um, something survived. Yeah, we hope the shifts and changes happen as people are more aware now of um, the value of artisan made and not, we're, we're so used to disposing of our clothing, right? Mm -hmm. So many, we're so much used to buying and then getting rid of it the next year. So hopefully with education initiatives and education programs that might change, at least some of us um, to, to value and to pay for that and to know that it's an investment. Um, does anyone else wanna to respond to the, to the question about kimono um, and how to support artisans that are working on that? Or the textiles in general, um, any of the different textiles? Um, thank you very much, uh, Keiko. 
So this is, um, Yuka, can we go back to a couple other questions? And we have plenty of time, so we have another 30 minutes, so we can dig into the textiles even more. Um, Yuka, uh, someone asked, is the group working with Raimi Fiber still making them? And can you tell more about the output or what they're producing? So the group with the Raimi Fiber, if they are still making it? Uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. At Rami fiber, Rami fiber, spinning Rami fiber, and uh, how to weave, uh, they start to weave. If uh, they finish uh, to make a uh, Rami uh, thread, uh, they began to work, and uh, began to uh, begin to uh, weave. But uh, Miyako Jofu, how to make Miyako Jofu is very difficult, um, the traditional way, so maybe it, it is difficult, so uh, some tutors, uh, yeah, teach teach them how to how to weave also yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they still are producing the rainy then uh -huh. and and passing that knowledge on good thank you um well and i i'm gonna turn this question from susie into a question for the larger group if that's okay susie um uh you could if you could ask if you could answer first um does the government help support any of the traditional textile crafts in Okinawa and beyond? Um, and Susie mentions that she visited the Kosuri weavers and Karume or Karume, and they said they were partially supported by the government. So maybe each of you could talk about the government support for traditional textiles. Uh, prefecture, Okinawa Prefecture helps and uh, um, it, um, Japan uh, nation uh, also helps, so um, yes, uh, uh, or uh, villages or each villages uh, helps uh, uh, them, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Keiko or Miwa, um, any knowledge of government help and support for these traditions? Okay, I, I will go. Um, regarding the use and textiles for the kimono, the, the government support the the industry and they're they are more focused on the kimono business. So they have hard time how to support. So I, I, I'm sure they put money on the industry. But their um understanding is the using textiles are used for the kimono, no other way. So that's the hardest part of the government. Yes, uh, the government is supporting the traditional textile in Japan uh, by the uh, one, one is uh, through Ministry of the Arts. The Ministry of the Arts uh, 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 have the the system to uh, register the indigenous uh, 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 national heritage, indigenous heritage, uh, national uh, tangible and intangible heritage, and uh, indigenous uh, folk indigenous heritage. Mm -hmm. So through that uh, registration, the ministry are supporting the industry of traditional textile and uh, the uh, the inheritor of the weaving uh, skills and the another uh, uh, ministry uh, ministry of commerce are also uh, supporting that traditional textile which i think that the keiko is mentioned good Miwa, would you mind putting up the an image of the wisteria bag again? Yes. Okay. Uh, we had one of the attendees asking. She says she's studying a horn bag uh, that might be similar to it. So she was hoping to see that once again. Wisteria bag. Okay. And then while you're while you're pulling that up. Um, how long does it take for, okay, I think this is it. Is this it, Barbara? Um, she says, yes, is that, that must be it right here. Is that correct? 
I think so. We'll see. Um, well, well, that image is up, and maybe Barbara can confirm if that's what she's looking at um, or looking for. Um, we had someone ask that in some of the members, the Fuji Ori as was finely woven. Uh, wait, in some of the members, Fuji Ori. Okay, let me start this over. How long, on average? does a member take until she is really, he or she is skilled at ply joining and weaving fiber? How long until they're experts? Okay. Uh, it is depend on the persons. Uh, if that the she or he uh, uh, intensively practiced, uh, they would be, uh, be mastered within the course within they are taking course, but if they are not, it takes time. <laughs> I, and on the regard of the pry, uh, pry joining or weaving, uh, it much takes time. And, uh, and the most difficult uh, issue is uh, correcting the material from the mountain because the wisteria back, we still uh, back, uh, we have to go to the uh, forest and correct it. So uh, suppose that I'm living in city, in Kyoto city, so I don't have any, my own place to correct that material. So I have to ask somebody who has the, the, the land or forest and take permission and to go. So uh, mastering the, the, the techniques, skills uh, uh, is the possible if you, uh, if they tried uh, intensively hard, but uh, we need the, uh, no, to, 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 to master the whole the process of Fuji Ori, uh, we need the, to communicate to the uh, lo local people in, in Tango. So it takes time. I, it, I would imagine it's, it's not, it's something you actually have to gather the raw materials, which I think mm -hmm. makes it more interesting to all of us, the, the idea of having to go into the forest and to pull the vines down and then go mm -hmm. through the whole process. So mm -hmm. I would imagine it's hard to say it takes a week or it takes a month. It, it seems like it has such a span of time. Um, when we're still talking about wisteria, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we have some more questions about the ply and um, how long are the fibers before they're joined? So how long mm -hmm. are the Fibers. Uh, we we call that uh, length hito hiro one hiro hiro is in old Japanese word it around one meter round like that one meter perfect mm. and this let's see if this we can we can still do a bit more of this is the twining one z twist mm -hmm. or is it or one oh. s twist and then together. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is something that if we can't answer now, um, mm -hmm. Molly, you could probably reach out to me what to ask. Um, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. it's a little hard, I think, when we have I will to... answer. Yeah, I, I will answer later if okay, she uh, email me or um, contact me. Okay, let me go ahead and let's look through here just one more time. Um, and someone was still asking um, if you can put the email address uh, for the Fuji Ori Association. Yes, sure, sure. The mm. chat box, that would be mm -hmm. great. And then this is another uh, question uh, about, uh, let's see, dyeing with a Fuji Ori. Um, so Miwa is, uh, do you have any examples of Fuji Ori being dyed with other Japanese techniques such as rosome, Rax Resist, Katazome, Paste Resist, or Immersion Dyed with Natural Dyes? Yes, <clears throat> yes, I know. Uh, the one artist, her name is uh, uh, to, sh sh shio, uh, to, her name is Shihoko. Uh, what is name? Uh, she is a 
dying, I uh, indigo dye, indigo and uh, mm, natural indigo dye on uh, Fujiori. Hmm. I bet that's beautiful. <laughs> yes. I'm looking. And um, you got if uh, there are other um, differences in the styles of Okinawa weavings. Um, if there are any other differences you can speak about in the Okinawa weavings, things that are... Yes, uh, a little different and uh, they, uh, mm, yes, they make, uh, start to make uh, the modern design and uh, 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 they think, uh, it, it is a good uh, tradition or a modern design. Uh, they also <coughs> like uh, them. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're seeing a lot of modern and new ways of creating um, new. Yes, new they're also creating now. Yeah. Very good. Good. Um, any other questions about the specifics of the ply, um, like Kartika? Maybe you can. Um, contact Miwa to, to understand a little bit more. Um, uh, Leslie, yes. can I sh share that uh, my PowerPoint yes, to show that the pride joining? Oh, that would be great. Yes, so just a moment. <laughs> That's a good instruction how to, uh, this is showing how to um, Pry join the the uh, fiber from bark mm -hmm. and uh, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, this book is from uh, Goro Nagano and Nobuko Hiroko, based to cheap bust fiber weaving in Japan and its neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. It's a very um, a good book uh, combined the, the bus fibers from all over Japan. She, she, they are intensively researched, uh, field researched, and she's explaining how to um, pry joining. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, how do I just say? Can you get by these pictures? And there is a. Mm -hmm. um, can you put the title of the book in the chat as well? Okay. That okay, I will do it. <laughs> for everyone, uh, mm -hmm. the chat, just uh, as a reminder, if you want to save mm -hmm. the chat, you should be able to, where you type your message, to press the box with the three dots on it and click save chat so that all of the resources and links. Um, you can save for after. Um, thank you, Polly, for your cl clarifying your question. Polly was asking, um, she was wondering if the yellow dye and the yellow kimono is with shibuki dye. Is it dyed with shibuki? Uh, uh, the dye from uh, fukugi, fukugi. Uh, it, I, I write uh, Japanese. Uh, Uh, this this one, Fukugi. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Perfect. Um, and Molly said that if we search Wikipedia list of national treasures of Japan, we should find um, the list of intangible heritage. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, and Kartika was very happy. Um, she was trying to explain that about the flies and the twists. So. Good, and it looks like you have the book, um, Miwa, that we can look for um, to look to to get more about the plies there. Uh, we do have five minutes left. Um, let's see if, uh, while we see if anyone else has any other questions. Let me get up. And again, can we do this? If oh, let's see. Okay, Linda just put a question up. Um, Yuka, are there any secret festivals in Okinawa where locals wear traditional garments? Oh yes, um, secret uh, ceremony. Uh, there are uh, secret ceremonies in 
especially in Kohama Island. Kohama, yes, Kohama uh, Island. Yes, Kohama Jima, Kohama Island is very um, especially, and they didn't, uh, they they don't sell uh, textiles. They weave uh, uh, aged uh, women weave uh, textiles for festivals, uh, for, uh, families uh, of the festival only. Yes, mm. so very especially. <laughs> it seems that's perfect. Thank you. Um, so we'll see if anyone has any other questions, but I, I always like as a uh, to ask each of you, um, maybe we can end by if each of you could um, say what you're hopeful for um, with each of the textiles that you're studying. What do you hope to see in the coming years um, for each of these textiles? Uh, my own question, just a way to end, to think about the future. Uh, Eh, hope, hope. Hope, hope. What are you hoping for? Hoping, uh, yes. Mm, uh, I visited uh, uh, many places and to uh, to meet them, and they very fine and uh, wonderful and uh, very e eager to make uh, textiles. So mm -hmm. I'm very impressed uh, from them. So I, I think they had hope. So. <laughs> I did <laughs> hope the the world become peace because this year that the, because of the COVID nineteen that uh, everyone cannot go uh, meet each other. And our uh, Fujiori training course also had to stop due to that. Mm -hmm. So I hope next year. The, everything has been be settled down, and uh, we like to welcome the the uh, in the kamisea or the uh, students. I mean, everyone who wants to run Fujiori are welcome mm -hmm. in in kamisea, and and I also uh, want to uh, continue my research in the in Kamisei and Fujiori Association. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, you know, with, with all of, I will say with every one um, of the questions we had, there is so much interest in these very beautiful textiles that each of you um, are studying. And so thank you so much for bringing those to us, um, for giving us uh, insight into the techniques and the ceremonies um, and the history and the lineage of so many of these and it's very important um, for us to have that chance. So thank you. Um, I think uh, Caroline, if you're still on here, it's seven. So I'm thinking I might be cut off soon. Um, but again, uh, we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow in different sessions um, as well as reach out and make sure I have this chat saved. So you can find me on the attendee list, Leslie Robertson. And I can email you the chat um, with the links if for some reason you weren't able to get that. Um, so thank you, everyone. I hope I got to everybody's question, but y'all can connect. Perfect. Thank you so much.